Hi, we're going to do homework 13. So let's do it. These are proofs, and we've worked on these a little bit before, but I think this is good to do on a video. So this is what's called a two-column proof because it has a column that's statements and another column that's reasons. And really, this is just writing out our logical steps. So that's what a proof is, to write out the logical steps. So first, given, or given within the instructions, C is the midpoint of BD. So we write that out. C is the midpoint of BD. Now that's a very important vocab word. So if they give us special vocab word, usually the next step is we have to define what that means. So if C really is the in the middle of this line segment BD, then what that really means is the left side has to equal the right side. Because if C is really in the middle, like let's say the whole thing's 10, and C's in the middle, that means that's five and that's five. So the definition midpoint would tell us that segment BC is congruent to CD. Now, notice there were three things given. So I'm getting gonna get a couple more. AB is congruent to, equal in measurement, to ED. Okay, so they're also saying AB is congruent to ED. So I'm gonna put two marks, two marks. And a third thing was given to us in the instructions, AC is congruent to EC. So AC is congruent to EC. Now, we know that triangle ABC ABC is congruent to EDC because, so you're answering the question, why? What's your reason? Hopefully you recognize that your evidence spells side, 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 triangle congruent. So that's why they're congruent because their evidence is side, side, side. All right, let's do another one. FG bisects TH. So anytime you get a special vocab word, you need to address it. The definition of bisector. So the definition of bisector would say if FG, this line, really does cut this line in half, then that means the left side is equal to the right side. TG is congruent to GH. Now they're saying, um, can we address the reflexive? So here in the picture, we see that FG is congruent to FG, right? Because they share that side. Now there's one more given statement, so I'm just gonna kind of copy and paste this down here. FT, FT is congruent to FH. So that's a third side that's congruent to this third side. And once again, this triangle is congruent to that triangle because it's side, side, side triangle congruence. Good job. Now, what's another way we could show our reasoning steps? And that's in a flow chart. So instead of a two column proof, there's still two things. I put my statement in a box and then I just give my reason underneath. So that's another way to kind of think through my steps. Um, this is also makes it look a little bit more realistic because in this problem, they've given us two things. They've given us PN, bisects MNO and MN is congruent to ON. So notice they told me two things and it doesn't really matter which one goes first. They're both going to help me come to a final conclusion. Okay, so PN bias MN, that's a vocab word, bisector. So the definition of bisector, if this line PN really does cut in half that angle, MNO, then that would mean this angle has to equal that angle. Because that's what bisecting an angle means, is that the whole angle is now cut into two equal pieces. So angle MNP is congruent to angle ONP. Okay, now they had NP is congruent to NP, NP, yeah, that's that. That's called reflexive. 
And now they're saying, oh, we filled in this given statement, but we didn't put anything on the picture. So MN side MN is congruent to ON, ON, okay? Now our evidence spells side, angle, side, side, angle, side. So side, angle, side, triangle congruence. Awesome. Now let's try another flowchart proof. Given AC, now we get a symbol is perpendicular to BD. So AC is perpendicular to BD. The definition of perpendicular lines would mean that that has to be a right angle and also this one has to be a right angle. So angle ACB has to be equal to 90 degrees and ACD has to be equal to 90 degrees. All right, what else is given? AC bisects BD. So AC bisects BD. Okay. So we have a word bisect, so we have to address it. Definition of bisector. The definition of bisector would tell me if AC cuts this in half, then this side has to equal this side. If C really is in the middle, then this side and this side must be equal. BC must be equal to CD. Yep. Now they said there's a reflexive in here, so I think I see it. It's AC is congruent to AC. And so now what is my evidence spell for my congruent statement? Side, angle, side, side, angle, side. So side, angle, side, triangle congruence. Awesome. Now let's go to the back. Back to my two column proof, I have two given statements, so AB is parallel to DE. Okay, so if AB, so we put arrows here. AB is parallel to DE, arrow, arrow. Then see how it makes a Z, that's AIAT. If these are parallel, I can say that this angle B is equal to that angle D, angle B, is congruent to angle D because of A, I, A, T. Now we have another statement given. A, B is congruent to D, E, and that's given. A, B, oh, this is gonna be hard. I got, it, I got two colors here now. Now they're saying this length is equal to that length, okay? And they're saying they've got vertical angles here. So I think I see some vertical angles right here, angle, BCA is congruent to DCA because they're vertical. So now what is my evidence spell? It looks like angle, angle, side, angle, angle, side. So I'm going to put angle, angle, side, triangle congruence. And now there's more than one way to name these, but I'll just name them first angle, second angle, no angle. So that'd be, tr oh, wait, I got a proof statement. Okay, so I can just kind of copy that down. Triangle ABC has to be congruent to triangle EDC. Yeah, ABC, EDC. Beautiful. Um, AC is perpendicular to BD, given. And we have to address that. So you'd have to do the definition of perpendicular. So if AC really is perpendicular to BD, then that means these are right angles, right? That's 90 and that's 90. And hmm, looking on the back, we know that, that the definition of right angles, all right angles are equal. So we know this angle has to equal that angle. Now, that came from my given statement. AB is congruent to AD. So let me go back to my brown. AB is congruent to AD. That was given. And AC is congruent to AC, so that's reflexive. So I can have a congruent statement. The left triangle is equal to the right triangle, and it looks like 
angle side side angle side side that spells ass or ass backwards i don't like i can't spell that but i do have a box so i think to myself this could work if i had a hypotenuse and a leg and that's exactly what i have i have a hypotenuse that match and a leg that match so this is hl triangle congruence and it's a right triangle so hl right triangle congruence all right, now let's try our hand at some flow charts. So given RS is perpendicular to SA, um, so we have to define definition of perpendicular lines. Uh, that means RS is perpendicular to SA, so angle S is a right angle or is equal to 90, right? We're also told VA is per perpendicular to SA. Okay. Given. Oh, but then they talk about this being like a midpoint. So it looks like I needed to put P is the midpoint of SA. So P is the midpoint of SA, P is the midpoint of SA, so that means SP is equal to AP. All right, then that's the definition of midpoint. All right, now we never wrote this one down, so that would be VA is perpendicular to SA. That was given so VA is perpendicular to SA. Let's see. So we've got... Oh, I know what. I think that they... I think that I could have put both of these in this box. Sorry about that. VA is perpendicular to SA. I could have put both of these in the box because they both would say the same thing. Okay. So what I want to put here is this, this, um, I got to get vertical angles in here. Is anybody like going, wait, you keep forgetting the vertical. So vertical angles are here. So I can say RPS, RPS is congruent to VPA, VPA, right? So now my evidence spells angle, side, angle, angle, side, angle. Awesome. Angle, side, angle, triangle, congruence. All right. Triangle RPS is congruent to triangle VPA. Awesome. Last one, finally. Given VK is congruent to RM. So VK is congruent to RM. Given TV is parallel to SR. TV, remember arrows, is parallel to SR. Okay. Then angle one is equal to angle four. So we see this Z, right? We see the Z, angle one is equal to, so that's a alternate interior angle theorem. Alternate interior angle theorem. Okay, the last given says angle two is congruent to angle three. So angle two is congruent to angle three. So let's see what we have there. It looks like angle, side, angle, angle, side, angle. Let's look closely. Angle, side, angle, angle, side, angle. Yep, angle, side, angle, triangle congruence. And the two triangles are right here, TKV and SMR. So triangle TKV and triangle SMR. Thanks for joining us. Have a great weekend.